get by It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Atari, many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, we have one of my favorite people, John Rulin. He is number one all-time distributor of Cutco knives in the 65-plus year history of the company. Very important, he's the author of Giftology, the art and science of using gifts to cut through the noise, increase referrals, and strengthen retention. John, of course I'm gonna read the subheadline because you spent probably hours and hours crafting that. He's the master gift giver who forges lifetime relationships while generating huge returns for his clients, who some of you have heard of, Chicago Cubs, Orlando Magic, Chicago Bears, top entrepreneurs like Darren Hardy, Cameron Harold, and many more. And the true essence of John Rulin can be summed up by a quote from a very important person, John. And this person said, John Rulin helps people love on people. So, John, thanks for joining me. Oh, man, you're going to go right to the heart and the core of uh, me with that with that quote. man. So I, who I, is I, an important I, person that I'm talking uh, about? Uh, I have three daughters under five. Yeah. And uh, my oldest uh, is Reagan. And... That's how she describes it when she talks about what her dad does. So, John, since it's Inspired Insider, I always ask, what's been the lowest point in the business and then how you push through? Yeah, I would say, well, there's probably two, two low points. One was um, the, the girl's father who mentored me and taught me a lot of these radical generosity principles. When we broke up and she went back with her ex, um, I had the ring ready. Mm. I thought I thought I was going to be spending you know the rest of my life with her back in Ohio with you know with you know I, I I I her dad was kind of like a father figure to me yeah and so so that was like that was one of those points where I went from like on the top of the world to like sleeping 12 14 hours a day not getting out of bed I blew through all my money uh, my assistant at the time actually had to pay for some of my bills because I was like I, money was that tight I almost didn't graduate from college I went from like a four zero to like not passing classes. Wow. Um, so that was that was pretty tough. How did you um, get out of that funk? Because um, you you seem like someone who that it takes a lot for you to to get into something like that. Yeah, it was deep. Um, I, I probably similar to a lot of people. Like I I had a, a mentor guy at the at the Cutco office um, who was like, hey, there's this new guy who came in the office. Seems to have a lot of relationships down in the area that you're in, but he has no no business knowledge. Why don't, why don't you guys team up? Why don't you mentor him? Mm. And um, so we did, and we like he had the relationship, I had the knowledge, and we teamed up and we split all the deals, and we um, me taking the focus off of myself and working mm. with, with working with him and pouring into him. Yeah. All of a sudden, like I I I I kind of like was able to get momentum and kind mm. of rise out, rise out of that. That's we amazing. Had, yeah. Had best summers ever, and so so that was one, and then another one was I had sold half the business thinking it was to grow the business. And ended up, um, yeah. But I'd invest in real estate, and it was about 2007. I invest in commercial, invest in other companies, and um, right. everything started to hit the fan. I, when I sold half the business, we found out that my assistant was stealing from me, um, which was a big blow. But then she was also my accountant, so she was doing my taxes wrong. So I went through an IRS audit, and then the meltdown happened, and so all this real estate started. Like, it all just hit it hit it once. And it, uh, lost um, my my brother. Um, uh, his nephew, or his nephew, his son, my nephew, drowned. Oh my god! Uh, it was like in the course of six months, everything that could go wrong went wrong. Jeez! To the point where I was like, and I started dating my now wife. Um, and so, like, I was barely keeping my lips above water. I was living on a thousand dollars a month take home. Uh, my business partner, uh, who was brought on to grow the business, didn't take a salary for eighteen months. Wow! Uh, you know, we were able to avoid filing for bankruptcy, but it was a tough. 18 to 24 yeah. months. Um, but without him, if I hadn't sold the business and I didn't sell 49% of the business, I sold 50% of the business because I felt like if I'm literally going to sell half the business, I want it to be somebody that like, it's almost like a marriage. Like yeah. you're in it. Yeah. There's no, nobody can trump each other. But without him, the business wouldn't have survived. 
he was the he was the one who said, <coughs> "John, go focus on relationships. I'll I'll handle the back end. Mm. Don't worry about it. Like I don't won't take a salary. Yeah. I, I'm I, I don't need the money. I'm good. Um, I believe in you. I believe in what we're gonna do. Yeah. Um, so so yeah, that was back in 2007, 2008. And your wife, you know, tell me about her role at the time and how she helped. Kind of, you know, that's like one of the toughest points of your life. Sounds like she was, uh, she was a rock. I mean, we, I, I would be lying if I didn't say like we didn't go through some rocky periods. Like an entrepreneur when he's ready, almost ready to drown, like, and I'm just like flailing to try to keep above water. Like she got the worst side of being an, of seeing an entrepreneur. Right. She heard, she heard about the Cameron Harold Brooks Brothers story, but she was getting like, like Raymond noodles and like us, us by you know going out to dinner you know, and was splitting dinner. Like she didn't get like the whining and dining and Ritz, you know, the Ritz treatment she got right. like, so the fact that she even just stayed with me, um, and believed that like I was worth dealing with all this crap and all this mess and baggage, um, is really in retrospect, kind of like unbelievable. Like I think most women would be like, you know, thanks, but no thanks. Call me when you got your like crap together. And she was willing to like roll up her sleeves and like for the first year of marriage, she made more money than I did. Um, Which is okay. Which is a humbling, you know, like, yeah, in in retrospect it is. But at the time, like my ego, Mm. like it it bruised my ego. Yeah. Um, And it was difficult for me to, but it was motivating because I wanted to have a family and I wanted her if she wanted to, to be able to stay home with the kids. If she didn't want to, that's fine. Um but uh, but yeah, she was a rock, man. She was, mm. you know, she was a farm girl. She grew up on a couple thousand acres, hog farm. Like, she wasn't afraid to like roll up her sleeves and deal right. with some crap, deal right. with some crap. Literally. So literally. <laughs> <laughs> so John, on the flip side, what's been uh, one of the proudest moments for you? Um, I would say, well, one for, um. Well, this book is one of my is definitely like a, a proud moment. I would say getting the opportunity of being asked to speak at Google um, mm. was a was a uh, was a huge like. You How know, did that happen? I, um, I I got to be a part of a, a faith based uh, organization that kind of like Christian business leaders, young Christian business leaders called Marketplace One. Uh, some guys out of Phoenix started it, and and I got to go through a, a class. Um, they have a kind of a class system, and I go back every year to teach the alumni. And one of the guys that heard me speak on the topic of radical generosity in business mm. was a Google, was a Googler. Mm. And he, he went back and emailed like hundreds of people and said, this guy just helped me give the most amazing gift to my wife. Mm. I think we could use his help. Yeah. And, and they said, yeah, we have this event. We think that you should come and speak at it. Wow. And, Where uh, was the event? Was it in it California? Was, yeah, it was, at, it was in Mountain View. So it was at wow. their, it was at their campus. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Um, unfortunately they wouldn't let me record it. I would have loved to. Really? Like, yeah. They wouldn't let me, uh, I, I figured the guy, you know, the, the company owns YouTube you think would record everything. <laughs> uh, not so much, not so much. They, uh, but, uh, was honored to be there yeah. and, you know, be able to check out the campus. And so speak. what was your experience like there speaking? It was, um, it was great. I, I, I um, I mean, I wasn't like I was there all day. It wasn't like I was like Bill Clinton showing up and giving a keynote to the entire company. It was a breakout at mm-hmm. a at an event. Yeah. Um, but people were really warm and inviting. They were interested, and and I even shared some of the perks and benefits that I give to my company employees, which some of them were like, "Wow, we don't even get that here at Google." Like really? that's pretty. Um, which was also like, you know, I I was like pretty proud that like hell yeah. Yeah, we were we were doing some things right. So, um, what what's one of those things that you mentioned that they were blown away, even though they get free food, massages, and anything else that they want? Yeah, pretty much anything on the planet. <laughs> um, like what, yeah. So, one of the things we did early on, we have a lot of moms that work for us, working moms, and they're with kids and and uh, young kids, a lot of them, and um, and so we started years ago, paying to have their house cleaned every other mo- every other week. Hmm. It costs us like that's amazing, yeah, eighteen hundred dollars a week. But what's funny is it has like th- tens of thousands of dollars in value because the husbands are like their lives are easier, the wives, the 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 women are less stressed, that's, yeah, 
their life goes smoother. It's a great idea. Wow. Yeah. It's such a simple concept, but um, people are like, how do you afford to do that? I'm like, how do you afford not to? It's like, it's a benefit that yeah. most people would they would love to have. They'd never spend the money on themselves to do it, though. Yeah. And, um, so That's amazing. John, thanks for sharing that. Um, yeah. I have in my notes the Bubble Banks company. Tell me yeah. about that. So um, it's not as, as much top of mind because it's, uh, you know, as a business owner, you, you think about revenue sources, but it, giving is a core value like uh, we 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 said a long time ago my business partner i don't need to start a charity but we want to be a spotlight in a funnel we literally said funnel for a cause that mattered before bubble banks was ever in the in the picture and so you know like when i see something i just look at things from a different angle i saw this at a wood shop this kid's piggy bank that was like kind of like two-dimensional and it and you were able to feed money into it into its belly and i'm like wouldn't it be cool if we did one like that in the shape of a cow for like Chick-fil-A? Because McDonald's has the little metal boxes. And uh, we ended up testing it in the shape of a cow. And we hoped to do a dollar a day. It ended up doing $5 a day. And so we started to, we part, we found out they were patented. We ended up partnering with a patent owner, uh, mm. John Chestnut. And we started to make not only the metal ones that you see in McDonald's, but we partnered with a guy who used to be at McDonald's that um, collects the money. You know, a most people don't realize that metal box at McDonald's does $30 million a year in change. Wow. Seriously, um, that's amazing. And if you tried to t- could collect like $3,000 with a change and put it in the back of your car, it would break your axle because it weighs like thousands of pounds. <laughs> so collecting the money is really difficult <laughs> in a, an efficient way. So we started to build devices and refer out this collection company. And so we've helped like Children's Miracle Network, one of the largest children's hospital organizations. We put them into like all the airports across the country. We build the devices. If you go to like an HMS, which runs like Starbucks and those kind of places, we build those devices. And literally, like if you add up, you know, our partners, like the guy from McDonald's who collects thirty million dollars a year, like we've you know tens of millions. Do you of basically dollars. help them process that? We process more efficiently. It, more efficiently, and we help them create creative devices to put money into them to give to charity. And we, wow. we, we may be break even. Um, it's not a, it's not like retirement money, but it, for us, it's like, that's money that would end up in like a coffee can at somebody's house. Like if you can get people yeah. and if you make it fun enough, kids will like, we've seen kids feed $50 worth of money of their <laughs> mom's purse that has change in the bottom of the purse into these like banks. what is it like what does it look like what yeah, kind of what, what's the most elaborate like, bank um like a dinosaur like a big four foot tall blue dinosaur that says feed me my money you know my money goes to children's hospital or whatever hmm. and so they you know the kids love watching the money go into the <coughs> the mouth of the it feels it feels like they're feeding the dinosaur feeding the dog right. or feeding right, the, right, giraffe, right. The, the cow or the giraffe and so these, uh, yeah, we have units, you know, thousands of units all over the country. Mm-hmm. Uh, and always looking, anybody that has a retail location where cash might be present or a doctor's office where there's captive audience of with kids, I mean, we can, mm. ra- we can raise incremental money that's pretty insane. That's for, amazing. For, for a charity. Yeah. John, thank you so much. I have one last question for you. But first, um, tell people where, where can they go and get Giftology? Where can they check you out? Yeah, so if they go to they can go to Giftology Book, uh, Giftologybook dot com, book dot com. Okay. They can go to they can go to Rulinggroup dot com to check out some case studies and you know some some of the strategies that we employ. Yeah, uh, um, they can follow me on Twitter, you know, at Rulin, uh, Facebook. I mean, all the kind of the normal places. Yeah, and Rulin uh, Group is R U H L I N, and then Group G R O U P dot com. Um, and I will be getting in an audible when you come out with the audio version, even though I've already read it. I always like listening to it as well. Um, yep. last question, John, um, who are some of the companies and entrepreneurs you want as a client in case someone listening knows them? Um, who, who's on your uh, list right now? Yeah. So I've had conversations with Gary Vaynerchuk, but I have not landed him as a client. Cause you're in uh, one of his videos. I am. I, I mean, I, you're everywhere. I'm like watching a Gary Vee video and then I'm like, wait, I think that's John right there, right? That, yeah. Yeah. The, he came to St. Louis and was meeting with Andy Frazella and I, you know, bought some books and we were supposed to meet up and 
um, ended up buy, you know, buying a bunch of food for him, waiting in his room. And he's like, why don't you just come hang out with me for the night? And of course, like I, I was a fly on the wall. Like he's there to add value to Andy for Zella's company, uh, the supplement company. And so we didn't really get a chance to chat. He's like, hey, meet, meet with me when in New York. But, you know, he's somebody that gives, 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 adds value. And I think that um, he could leverage the gifting side. A couple of the gifts that we've given him, like the Lego, You've yeah, seen like the, the Lego. That's one of our clients. Yeah, Chris Green has a testimonial video for, about you, on and how he sent this like exact replica Lego right of the Gary yeah. V set. Yeah. yeah. So, so he would be uh, somebody that that we know as acquaintances, but I'd love to have a. I'd love to be a partner of theirs for them and their their clients. Yeah. Uh, Tim Ferriss, um, I think um, you know would really appreciate what we what we do and what we teach around habits and, and I think gratitude. I mean, he was a big supporter of the five minute journal, which is great. Yeah. Um, but most people don't know how to take action on their gratitude. Um, yeah. and then I would say I've corresponded with Seth Godin. I haven't, I, and he always responds, but, um, but I have, and, and he's a big fan of, of Cutco. One of our clients sent him knives and he's like, these are almost too sharp to use. And, and, um, and he uses them. He all shaves the time. his head with them or <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Um, and I would say Michael Hyatt is another person I respect and follow from afar. Um, I know Stu McLaren does some stuff for him, I, but I haven't asked for any favors there to, yeah. to get, but I, I really respect his platform and, and who he is, you know, from a faith perspective, I think we would really resonate and connect with. So those are some people that I'm, yeah. that, are, that are on my radar, hopefully, uh, giftology will end up in their hands. Yeah. Um, so if anyone has a, um, any ideas on that? Um, contact John or actually forget John just contact them directly and see what you can do for John because he's always giving to other people so John I really appreciate it this has been fantastic thank you so much Jeremy thanks man for having me this has been awesome I yeah. can't believe the time went by that I, fast I know I know take care what I got you can't buy it resides between my eyes walk through the fire came out better on the other Beach if you find the sand right now I feel like a hundred grand